God sends us providential people every day. Occasionally there is a giant that comes among us who is prophet and who in fact is activator and provides the influence, the passion, the uh, encouragement to do what we do. My fondest memory of Sister Peter Claver was a day that I was privileged to attend Mass in the little chapel here and she was serving as acolyte. And the beauty of her humility and seeing her in that role as well as having the great respect for her in the community, knowing her accomplishments, knowing the force of her personality, knowing the many gifts that she had, and yet to see her right open and bare before God. This enormous hospital that she created and that is so successful, and she didn't do it for the credit. She did it because she wanted to make that contribution to health care and to the Inland Northwest. I think that just from the stories that I hear that I think she was an extremely compassionate person, but at the same time very much um, knew where she wanted to go, knew the vision for the medical center, but more importantly I think she knew the vision for the community. I've tried to relive in my mind those early days when Mother Joseph and her companion Sisters of Providence arrived in Spokane Falls. So the sisters found in establishing the first hospital in Spokane generous collaborators among the pioneers who gave assistance in building and sustaining the work that began on this riverfront site. I can't even imagine what this community would be like if Sacred Heart weren't here today. And so, you know, her, her passion, her tenacity in making certain that people understood the need really set us into the future now as we are continuing to serve the needs of the poor and the vulnerable in Spokane. I think most people remember her walking through the halls here and she never hesitated to stop and talk to someone. And I think people felt her presence all the time. It was how she treated the people she worked with, whether they were administrator of another facility, whether they were president of an organization. It was her honor and respect. And she didn't let the hard work of administration overshadow the compassionate, loving care. It was always there. She would always say, the patient comes first. And many times, if we were walking down a corridor and she saw a patient that might be in a wheelchair or having a little problem, she veered away from what we were doing. It could be a group of us. She would veer away and assist that patient. She may not be able to save the world, but she could make, an, make a difference in somebody's life every single day. And as a leader, wanted to make certain that as people needed help, that Providence was here to provide. I think there was a sage once who said that we should pray as if everything depended on God and work as if everything depended on us. And I think Sister Peter Claver reflected that. She was a woman of vision. She was practical. She was very prayerful. She was very thoughtful. She had a high standard of expectation of herself and of others. When we look back at her legendary kind of leadership, we look back and we can say, what was it that made her be so successful? And what can we do as administrative team now, as leaders today, as staff today? We can remember the passion the purpose. The sisters and Sister Peter Claver gave us a lot of um, lessons that we can learn, things that we can take into the future, and we just need to stop and listen. You know, listen to understand and then speak with love, and I think that's what Sister Peter Claver did a lot. I have her prayer. I keep this on my desk. God is good. 
and as I have experienced his love and healing, I pray you likewise are strengthened and comforted by a sense of his presence in and around you. To touch your presence is a wonderful thing.